good afternoon. So I'm Roy Aguilar and I'm the Research Deputy Head for Equity Research under the Retail Division. And we would like to discuss with you the performance of the stock market last November. We will discuss then the performance or the what to watch out for in the month of December, right? So as mentioned, what happened in November, what to watch out for in December, new buy calls, changes table highlights. Okay. So what happened in November? In November, the PSCI ended higher by 10% to close at 6,780, right? So keep in mind that um, last October, the market rallied by 7%. Then November, 10%, right? So we're actually, the PSCI is just down by 4.8%. Keep in mind, was, we were down by 20% at one point. So let's discuss what made the market rally in the month of November. So definitely the stronger Philippine peso, especially as the U.S. central bank signaled the slower pace of rate hikes. Because usually, if a certain country increases the in interest rates, nila, their currency gets stronger. Okay, so since there's a slower pace of rate hikes, na, meaning the forward-looking financial markets, eh, right? In anticipate, na. so the dollar gets weaker, hence the peso gets stronger. Right. And we're seeing net foreign buying, right? We're seeing net foreign buying given the stronger peso. And besides that, the cor the corporate earnings last third quarter, nine months, was also better than expected. We, we, we saw a lot of outperformers, okay? So it really resulted in the market coming together. And, you know, in terms of uh, the difference as compared to the previous rally earlier this year, we, what I noticed was the, the net foreign buying was present as com was more present as compared to the previous um market rebound. So this is a welcome development, right? Because we want to see foreigners come back. So in terms of price action, you can really see the strong steep rally, right? While that is a positive thing, we have to take into consideration that a healthy rally is a one that is is encountering pullback from time to time, and that that's what happened today, first of December, right? So so far so good, price action wise, strong rally. It's now trading above the fifty day, hundred day, two hundred day moving average. That's the first time since April, and now today, December first, the market did pull back. So that's a positive development. Okay, so now the strategy is you can accumulate on the pullback, perhaps on the 200 DMA around the red line here, around 6,600. So 6,600 is also the support. So 6,600 is a good uh, level to accumulate on. Right. But of course, if you're sp price specific, you can set stop limit or display 640. Set the then negate na yung price rebound in our opinion. Okay, so it must just pull back around 6,665. That's the that's the final draw, right? So pag 64, pag below 64, maybe bear, bear market rally lang siya. So what do we watch out for in December? Still, the movement of the USD peso, if the stronger peso was the main reason of the market rebound, if the peso goes back to 57, 58, then the market may pull back. Language of the center back across the world of inflation. Again, what drove the stronger peso was weaker or was the in, uh, anticipation of smaller rate hikes, right? Because, and then smaller rate hikes is dependent on inflation and employment. So we must stay watchful of economic data. Of course, we, our reports provide that for you. Cracks in the global financial system, the basa crypto. Currency, the likes of FTX, I think that BlockFi, right? Showing uh, um, signs of ready uh, filed for bankruptcy. Which big banks have lent, which big uh, financial institutions have lent their money to these uh, crypto cryptocurrency or um, blockchain companies, diba? So if malaki exposure, that could impact also across the whole global financial um, system. Geopolitics still. Right, something to watch out for. It could easily be a black swan. 
moving forward, China, Taiwan, the diba? Ukraine, Russia still ongoing. Oil prices increase during winter months. So far, nagpupul ba, right? Let's see if December, the December, January, that's the the diba? that's the peak winter months. Will there be supply crunch? Definitely in need of heat, fuel, oil, economic data specifically to watch out for. A lot of things. Um, inflation definitely that, that's monthly, right? So, dapat inflation should continue to show signs of peak. And then we also have central bank interest rate decision December 15, December 14 for Philippines, US respectively, Japan, December 9. So, last month of the year, will we see Santa Claus rally or not? It will. It is dependent still on data. Diba? So, so, let's see. And just like last month, we would like to reiterate the these topics. Namin, right? So, SM, SM Prime, RLC, Jolly, the BRHI, video, BPI, SECI, right? Those remain to be a topic. You will notice Eyalan is um, not there. So, so we are reevaluating Eyalan. Eyalan still has upside definitely, but in terms of topics, we have to reevaluate, especially we are, we prefer more yung mga high mall exposure, right? Kasi for Eyalan, residential siya mas heavy. And high interest in environment is not uh, the best environment for residential sector. Nevertheless, um, in terms of the performance of our picks since the start of the year, we included Ayala Land here, syempre, for transparency, we to see, to gauge better, gauge the performance of the stock picks as a whole, and it outperformed. Um, 12.7% market cap weighted return, equal weighted return 5.8% as compared to the market, which is down by 4.8%. Equal weighted return, the assumption is if you bought all of our picks equally to your portfolio, 5.8% up. Assuming you bought them according to market cap. For example, SM, SM Prime, they are the two highest market cap. You bought them, yun yung highest, uh, that's the highest uh, exposure in your portfolio. Okay? So, there. In terms of our new buy calls, we have a couple, URC. Right? So we have to now take into consideration the consumer staples that, you know, the rel the more reliable, the old reliable ones, right? For URC, to explain, our target price for URC is 150 pesos. Amid the high inflation environment, uh, we retain our demand assumptions given URC's diversified portfolio offerings across ASEAN markets and given that it is a down-trading beneficiary. The bad down-trading, usually, when we, we, when we spend Tapos high inflation. Of course, we still need to spend, but we we try to have uh, um, we, we buy cheaper goods. And they are beneficiaries of that, you are seeing. Since they cater to low to mid income households or in terms of their product, major lower tier in terms of price levels. And that's the first point. Second point, margins should continue to ease or margins should continue to recover as commodity prices continue to ease. Diba? Strong balance sheet is a plus for USD because they divested their, their uh, Oceania business. So they have now net cash position of 2.1 billion as of September 2022. So they could be they, they could easily be on the lookout for M&A opportunities. Diba? And that is a sharp price catalyst in the past. So USD. Next is CNPF. Century Pacific Food, our target price is 29 pesos. So we like CNPF for the following reasons. So we have we're straightforward for this. Number one, diversified product portfolio that is well positioned to capture changing consumer preferences and weather macroeconomic headwinds. Number two, pricing power can partially cushion cost pressures. Number three, its OEM expert business mitigates weak currency impact. So the the beneficiary of a stronger dollar are the exporters. So usually if relatively, ano ka, if you export, you benefit from that. Robust operating cash flows and strong balance sheet is the fourth one. Okay. So the buff, going back to the third point, you'll notice we're benefiting from the weaker peso or the stronger dollar. It was the likes of Nickel Asia kasi they export um, yung nickel goods. Eh, diba? So usually they incur foreign exchange gain kasi they sell yung revenue nila, dollar, is malakas. So for CNPF, they have an expert business that can mitigate the weak currency impact. Okay? 
as for trade playbook highlights, of course, given our recent market rebound, we had the uh, we had we had the uh, three buy calls got uh, hit our profit level, and then that resulted in our hit ratio getting higher around sixty two percent nasha. The PSEI four point eight percent down, but the perf- the portfolio or the performance of our traders playbook is now seven point four percent. If you average both the gains and the losses, so far so good. As for sell, sell calls, the the can see leisure uh, resorts because we pointed out that it got way too high and we got it right. So the pullback sha by as much as twenty five percent. So now we welcome uh questions. Okay, we'll give you guys a couple of minutes. I, I, I uh gave us a lot of time for your questions, diba? Kasi last and then last month of the year probably have a lot of questions. Perhaps how to rebalance your portfolio, which stocks to own, which stocks to sell. You probably have questions of the upcoming IPOs or outlook for 2023. Maybe I could. All right. So it's time to answer your uh, questions. Okay. Okay. First question. What can we expect on the retail? Share price movement is it still a good investment, specifically MRIT and RCR? It's a good question. Of course, we have to be a bit patient <clears throat> with the REITs because the we see the high interest environment. Um, yung mga iba, yung mga other investors up for bonds na nagpo provide ng 7, 7.5 percent, the annual return. So, for other investors, they they're going for that. Because sure, seven seven point five percent, yun depending on how quality your the bonds are, leba. For REITs, kasi it's not only the yield. You also have to take into consideration the share price. If the share price goes down, you get the dividends. Baka quits lang. But as of now, we're seeing signs of peaking of interest rates, right? Baka magtatas pa ng interest rates, but you can really see the deceleration, the slowdown of the interest rate hikes. That's that will be good for REITs, right? Because nag show na if nag show na ng signs of peak yung interest rates, dapat nag show na ng signs of bottoming REITs. And you, it's a good thing that you mentioned emit and Oscar because those are our actually our preferred REITs. We prefer the bigger ones, right? The more established ones. And for emit and RCR, kasi they also have even a REIT they also have. Infuse, they have plans to infuse more assets in the future. So that's good because that directly increases your value of the REITs. So for now, expect REITs to um slightly rebound. Be patient about it. This is definitely an investment, nothing for short-term trade. I would definitely put money on REITs, especially right now. But I'm going to be patient about it. Don't expect quick rebound. Okay. Perhaps next year we can see them outperform. So that's for leads. Okay. Next question: What will happen for the three stocks affected by the MSA rebalancing? Converge, Litec, and MPI. They got um the specific thing that happened was si MSA kasi meron silang standard cap. MSA standard cap. Meron ring MSA small cap. What happened with Converge, Litec, and MPI is they got downgraded from the standard cap to the small cap. Nevertheless, a lot. More foreign investors follow the standard cap, track the standard cap, so it 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 still affects them, right? What happened was for MSA rebalancing, kasi investors are getting better at pricing it in, right? Meron ng mga ways to really forecast. So even before the MSA rebalancing, a lot of investors are selling it already. You notice that, di ba? Si Converge September, October, but bagsak ng bagsak. GT cap also, especially coming into November. For MPA, because it's it has been quite consolidating lang, not much exciting in terms of price action, right? For converge, it went as low as what 11 pesos. Right now it, it quickly bounced to 15 pesos on the day of the uh, on the announcement date pa that it got removed. So a lot of investors are getting better at uh, pricing it in. So to answer your question, what will happen? It already it it's already priced in, right? So you will see those hopefully in our reports in terms of our forecast. We forecast better in PSA rebalancing, but we we we, we try to uh, forecast MSR rebalancing also moving forward. Okay. So right now to answer your question, the price in na. So it's if for the likes of Converge, it's a buy it's a buy call for us. So you could 
buy already converge. Okay, although for converge, our target price is around 15 pesos. I think right now, maybe a wait for pullback. For GT Capital, of course, we're part of the group, diba? So we can't directly, we can't cover GT Capital, but kasi for GT Capital, you're positive on banks. It has Metrobank. For the vehicles naman, of course, economically opening directly affected bibili ka ng kotse. But of course, inflationary environment, so medyo tempered yung growth. Nevertheless, GT Cap is cheap. For MPI, MPI is cheap, but it has been consolidating for so long. A lot of investors have concerns perhaps on the regulatory uh, nature of the businesses. Right? So, those things you have to consider. So, I hope I answer your question. Okay. Okay, next question. What is the projected PSE index level by end of 2022? So, I hope we explained this to you several times before that diba, we have a base case and bear case. Base case, initially 7,000, but that was before this, this high inflation, high interest rate scenario. So, we had a bear case. We have a bear case. That's 6,600. And na hit na siya. Right, so that's for by end of 2022. So we're sticking with that, but we are open to the fact that the market can continue to rally by year end and until first half of 2023 before possibly pulling back second half of 2023. And why we don't have specific levels yet for 2023, but that's the general direction that we expect because okay, to maas na interest rates. Now, after higher interest rates, the concern now is growth. How it affects economic growth. Kasi diba pag, when you increase interest rates, the main purpose there is to temper inflation. The other impact is, since higher borrowing costs, that actually tempers economic activity, which will directly affect your economic growth. So that's our concern coming into 2020, impact of possibly recession. Recession by definition, the negative GDP growth. So, to elaborate more on the answer, okay, by end of 2022, pwede siya mag 6-8, right? That's price action-wise. And then, for sub-2023, it could go 7, 7,200 before pulling back second half of 2023. Okay, so that's the general direction we have. Now, we don't have an official yet, but we will definitely have an event for that. So, hopefully, we can elaborate more on that. I said it again. Um, okay. This is a good question. Question is, LTG was an, a stock that is unloved, diba? Is, is it still unloved? Because based on their, the by recently, they, they gave high dividends. So can you give some view on this stock on the upside or target price if there any? Anyway? Well, we don't cover LTE, that's one. It's still unloved because despite higher dividend, it's still trading below book value. It's still relatively cheap as compared to other holding companies. The question is, definitely may upside, siya, no? but is it a buy? The, 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 the problem kasi is a lot of PSEI names, a lot of stocks are undervalued. So now which should you prioritize first? And LTG probably is not the one heavily prioritized because number one, yung mabigat sa earnings na is yung tobacco. And tobacco every year or, or how many times a year they they increase their prices because they pass on yung higher excise taxes to consumers. Eh. So that will definitely be in lower volume cigarettes. We're just hoping that mo offset ng prices, yung volume, and start as pa yung revenue nila. But definitely, that's still, uh, that's an overhang that will temper growth moving forward. For the bank naman, well, as compared to the other banks, PNB has a higher non-performing loans, meaning, mas marami nag, yung tinapayam nila, mas marami nag default as compared to the other banks. So, it takes a while, it takes more time for them to recover in terms of um, the quality so yes it is unloved it is undervalued but um, in terms of upside but as upside but in terms of 
whether it will actually reach the top side, it will take some more time as compared to other names. So, yeah. Okay, so this is, we have a couple of uh, uh, people asking this regarding why Monday Nissan is not included in our bicycles. Actually, kasi, the issue kasi there is uh, the recent, when it IPO'd, um, part, part or bulk of the optimism came from the fact that we have exposures that uh, um, what do you call this meat free business yung alternative right and right now yung corn it's called corn diba yung meat free uh, food it's not performing as expected okay it's not performing as expected so that resulted in a lot of downgrade also yung higher cost environment they're, they're exposed to UK na affected by higher labor costs kasi diba yung Brexit so yung mga yung whatever is left sa sa UK mataas yung demand there so wage so mataas ang labor cost so that eats into the margin of money so right now it's still ongoing those two problems are still present so we are not uh, keen yet on Monday so yeah I hope you answered your question That was somewhat um, an answer for somewhat of a question for perhaps um beginner. Right? So how many stocks should you hold at a time as an investor? Actually, that depends on the amount then you, that you want. Depends also on the level of experience you have. If you're quite a beginner, three to five perhaps. But if, for example, if your budget is 20,000 pesos, I don't suggest holding three to five stocks. Because like your minimum mo para to really, I, I, yung maganda yung rule na yun, yung 8,000 pesos minimum, right? Kasi, pag below 8,000, 20 pesos pa rin yung tax mo. Diba? So, dapat, if, if, if 100,000, there, there, yeah, you have a lot more to play with. If 200,000, 1 million, there, you have a lot more to play with. But uh, that also depends on how you can manage. If, if you want to buy individually naman yung 30 PSC names, just buy the FM ETF. But cheaper. If you want to be, it depends also talaga how much you can handle. A ako, I don't go more than 10, to be honest. But that depends on you. Uh, but let's just take into consideration the 8,000 pesos per stock. And then, just depends on how much you can manage. Right? Because all of all of those stocks won't go up at the same time. Diba? Uh, so you should really pinpoint which you think will outperform and that's where that's what we're here for in terms of our research reports. Right. So yeah. Okay, so next question. What's your outlook of the upcoming US CPI and Fed meeting next week? Where do you see the market going? So in terms of Fed meeting, I believe it's around uh, December 14th, pa. Okay. And then yung inflation is around, I think, 12th or 13th. So, in terms of our outlook there, we expect some signs of deceleration in terms of inflation. Same. So, for the inflation, kasi ako personally, um, I just, I, I, I was recently in the US lang, and I can really see yung fuel prices really pull back. But of course, nag-trickle down na siya eh. Siyempre, when all a, a lot of goods get expensive, you restaurants, other businesses are forced to increase prices. And di naman sila ganun ka-volatile in terms of increasing, decreasing prices. So when fuel prices went down, does it mean the products will go the products The prices of the products will go down. So some, some, some of those will be sticky already. So that's what's happening right now. Even though fuel prices are down, a lot of goods are still up. So nevertheless, we can expect deceleration of inflation, but not significant. And then I think the Fed will reflect that sentiment. The Fed said that they expect slower pace of rate hikes beginning December, which is this month. So we expect that to happen. So that could result in the market staying 
bullish. The question is, is it a sustainable bullish movement or bear market rally? Diba? So we should continue to um, observe market data. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Next question. It's pretty interesting. According to the DOJ, foreign investors can now own 100% of renewable energy products. What could be the effects of this to our local renew renewable energy companies like ASEN? Has been a complete disaster once this has been implemented by the DOE. Well, the effect of this definitely they, they have that's why they are, they are they are aggressively expanding right now. They they're getting a lot of land as we speak to really prepare for this uh um in full ownership, right? I believe Moses and geothermal palang na pasa right. So Definitely, this could affect talaga mga companies. Right? Um, but a lot of these companies have concrete plans and they are open to partnership. So they're willing to do that talaga because there are a lot of room to really um, earn from renewable energy. Right? That That's definitely the present and the future. Right? But of course, given the recent power supply issue, we came to appreciate more yung coal especially it's a base load capacity. But nevertheless, renewable energy is here to stay. So we welcome these companies na aggressive sila mag-expand. And there's a likelihood na they will partner with these foreign investors once these foreign investors see room for investment in the country. Because a lot of countries also are, you know, renewable energy boom. So let's see sino mga pupunta sa Philippines. Next question, what's your outlook about Converge? Is it still good? But I think I answered earlier that there's room for Converge fundamentally to, to grow further, especially under penetrated penetrate, fiber broadband business, especially outside the zone. Price-wise, though, our target price is just 15.50. So we recommend to accumulate on pullback, right? Not necessarily at this level. Okay. So... Oh yeah, it's a good question. During December, does volume tend to go down? Does big investors do sell off before the end of year 2022? For your second question, it depends on the news catalyst. Eh. It always depends on that. In Santa Claus Rally, naman, I think when I did the podcast on that a couple of years ago, parang hindi naman ganun ko convincing Santa Claus Rally. Like, I, I, I think less than 70% of the time. Probably like by chance pa yun. Um... During December, this volume tend to go down, especially at the latter part of the year, definitely. For the first few weeks, data heavy, right? We're seeing inflation data, we're seeing central bank interest rate decision mid of December. So a lot of price action from there, a lot of volume. And then as the last week of December, mag, mag, um, mag, ano yan, bababa, right? So given the stress, we will probably the magpahinga naman yung mga panayos. So yeah, I hope I answer your question. Oh yeah, this is a good question. Any top which stocks will be removed will be included for next PSA index balancing this effect. I haven't really gone through yet which which stocks will uh likely enter. But before kasi we forecasted right now see si Samara papasok. Let, I will evaluate if the DMC can enter. Let's see. If DMC can enter and then let's see if the likes of uh, Mega World or RHI will stay. Diba? So, let's see. Let's see. I think actually Mega World lang. Let's see if si Mega World. Mega World LTG can stay. Yun. And then as for the the reports that you don't see the website, we're still um, we're still uh trying to fix that, right? Um, hopefully, I, I hope you guys notice. Hopefully, bit by bit, the features ng pro are getting back. Your research lang yung naglalag. Uh, what we do share our reports sa Viber group for all clients, right? All clients, one group lang siya. So, so please email or email a chat here. Set ano to if you want to receive the link to the Viber. Or email us later para alam namin client. So apologies for that. So we we have playbook reports almost every day. We just send it to Viber because we can 
we're not able to upload yet. Eh? So yeah, sorry about that. So good question. No? So for 20 million fund for stock trading, what's the maximum stocks? I I've seen a lot of clients um, as much as 30, 50, but that depends on how, how much you can manage it. Like, safe to say I wouldn't put um 25% of my money on just one stock. Right? I would diversify a bit, probably as, as high as 10 na per stock. Right? So that gives you a gauge na probably like you can you could play around with around 15 to 20 names, right? That that's me. All right. That's me. I don't like holding a lot of stocks. I say um lot def more than 20. I call like at most 20 lang. Right. Kasi at least manageable mo siya. Mapapanood mo siya. Eh. You will observe better the performance. Does it, if you have 20 million, they have 200 million. Ako, as much as 20 stocks lang yun talaga. Yeah. Okay, next question. Do you, uh, yeah. Do you suggest to hold video as they declared stock dividends? I think at the stock dividends, same lang naman yung value eh. Ng, ng stock. Same lang yung may, may market cap. Kasi di, just probably yung share price na mag change But the fundamentals remain robust for BDO. Diba? So, may numbers when if relative beneficiary financial environment, economic reopening pa. So, I would hold BDO. Okay. Last question. With the recent uptrend of global coal, coal price, any insight on Semerari, especially the latest FMV with higher cash dev expectation March 2020? That's a good question. Well, for Semerara kasi, um, it's good to hold, but I think I would put it at a let, lesser um, exposure as compared to the other names. Kasi Semerara is really rallied high na. Nag-pullback na siya because all of, I think all or most of the positives have been priced in already for Semerara. Unless magkaroon ng power supply crunch on it which will push coal price higher. That's the catalyst for Semerara. But right now, I think all or most of the positives have been priced already. Good to hold, perhaps for dividends, but I would put a lot more money in the undervalued names, economic opening names, or perhaps in mga safer consumer staples like URC, CNPF. Kasi March pa ulit, or kailan pa ulit magbibigay ng dividends yan. So I would opt for other stocks for now in terms of exposure. So that's it for the month of November. I hope to see you guys next month. So thank you. And as always, in first security, hashtag your future first.